Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to the last Sunday of April. We thank you for being with us throughout last week. And we gather together as your children in our respective homes to worship you, to praise you, to render our thanks unto you, and to have fellowship with you. O oh Lord, we pray that you may accept our praises and our thanksgiving, bless our service, and help us to come together as one family to glory for your name. Be with us throughout this service. Bless all those who participate in this service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Now let us all praise God by singing the hymn one. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Hymn number one. We shall pray. 
page number 43, the first order of worship. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall show forth your praise. Glory be to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us adore God. Praise be to you, O God the Father, who did create all things by your power and wisdom, and did so love the world as to give your Son to be our Saviour. Praise be to you, O God the Son, who has made man like us in all things, sin except, and was delivered for our offences, and raised again for our justification. Praise be to you, O God the Holy Spirit, who does lead us into all truth, and does shed abroad the love of God in our hearts. All praise and glory be to you, O God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will arise and go to my Father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. We have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us kneel and examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. O God, our Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy upon us, we beseech you. Cleanse us from our sins and help us to overcome our faults through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the first lesson will be read to us. Today's first Bible reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 to 10. First Bible reading, Genesis chapter 18, commencing the reading from verse 1. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, quick, three sehas of fine flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a cough, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the cough that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to them, 
where is sara your wife and he said she is in the tent the lord said i will surely return to you about this time next year and sara your wife shall have a son and sara was listening at the tent door behind him here ends the first bible reading praise be to the o christ now the second lesson will be read to us the second lesson is taken from the book of hebrews chapter 13 verses 1 to 8 hebrews chapter 13 reading from verse 1 let brotherly love continue do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them and those who are mistreated since you are also in the body let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for god will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have for he has said i will never leave you nor forsake you so we can confidently say the lord is my helper i will not fear what can man do to me remember your leaders those who spoke to you the word of god consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith jesus christ is the same yesterday and today and forever here ends the reading thanks be to god now we shall have the responsive reading the psalm chosen for responsive reading today is 15 psalm 15 Who shall dwell on your holy hill? O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. in whose eyes a wild person is despised but who honors those who fear the lord who says to his own heart and does not change let's read together who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent he who does these things shall never be moved glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen now let us all sing together hymn 157 jesus calls us over the tumult hymn number 157 
let us pray Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I am happy to meet all of you through this online service. Lockdown has given me an opportunity to become a tele-preacher or a tele pastor who used to say when people don't come to church should we address the empty pews i am not addressing empty pews though you are able to see me i am not able to see you in person but i I am able to envision the whole thing. You are all inside the church. You are all sitting in front of me. I know who is sitting where. Second row, who is sitting. Third row, who is sitting. And this side, second row, who is sitting. On my right side, near the organ, who is sitting in the front row. Who is sitting at the back row. And left side, who is sitting in the front row, back row. And then choir. So I am able to envision. I am able to see all of you. It's a good opportunity for us to know God's plan and sit at home and worship God and experience God's presence in our family life. Last Sunday, we saw the encounter that St. Thomas had with the risen Lord. And today, you are going to see another disciple, not one of the twelve. He is the first among the twelve. You guessed it right, Apostle Peter. Jesus, after his resurrection, met some of the disciples in the locked room in Jerusalem. And before his crucifixion, he informed the disciples that he will meet them in Galilee. That we find in St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 32. St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 32. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Here, Jesus has come to Galilee. And the disciples have also come to Galilee. Let us turn to St. John chapter 21. That is the gospel lesson for this Sunday. St. John chapter 21 verses from 1 to 19. Jesus appears to seven disciples. Here after resurrection, the disciples did not know what to do, how to go about. So here, 
Peter being the number one disciple, invited others to join him. He said, I am going fishing. Then other six disciples, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, John and James, and two others of his disciples were together. When they were together, Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. We will also join you. Take us with you. So they all ventured into the sea. It is called Sea of Tiberias. John calls it Sea of Tiberias. It is the Sea of Galilee. Luke calls it Lake of Gennesareth. And they ventured into the sea. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Look at these words. Turn with me to St. John chapter 21, verse 5. Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. They obeyed, they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put, out, put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. So then Jesus prepared a breakfast for them. They all came and they all had breakfast. They had bread and fish. That's what we find here. Jesus invites them. Verse 12, come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. Then after the breakfast, Jesus took Peter aside and asked him a piercing question three times. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. Then he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, Son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you are young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This is said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. So this is what we find in these 19 verses. We find two parts in this passage. Verses from 1 to 14. Jesus causes a great catch of fish. Then verses from 15 to 19, 
dialogue with Peter. Or we can say, a restoration of Peter. <coughs> this is the second miraculous catch of fish reported in the Gospels. You remember, the first was associated with the calling of the disciples as Jesus' followers. It's in Luke chapter 5, verses from 1 to 11. As I said earlier, Luke calls the Sea of Galilee as Lake Gennesaret. At that time, Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. Here, this extraordinary catch of fish is related to the recommissioning of Peter and Jesus' call to follow me. The disciples had returned from Jerusalem to Galilee. It is about 80 miles. They traveled 80 miles from Jerusalem. They have no work in Jerusalem. Everything was over. So they have come back to their native place. When Peter said, I am going fishing, the other six disciples joined him. And what happened? They were trying their best to catch fish. They could not get anything. You know, Peter was, a, was an ace fisherman. They're all experts. They know how to catch fish. But they tried their best. They could not get anything. And Jesus was standing on the shore. The disciples did not know. Perhaps they did not recognize <coughs> Jesus because they were preoccupied with their work. In addition, there was not much light at that time of the day, daybreak. Then look at the words of Jesus. He addresses them as children. Usually Jesus will tell them, you are my friends. In John chapter 15, he says, I am not going to call you my servants. You are my friends. So here, Jesus says to them, children, do you have any fish? It's a question. A question from the shore was probably regarded as a request to buy fish. The disciples answered that they had nothing to sell. No, they said. But they obeyed. They saw a great miracle. It was John who recognized the Lord first. And Peter was the first to act. He plunged into the sea. And then he wanted to see Jesus first. It is only 100 yards away from the shore. 100 yards means 300 feet. That's why they were able to hear the voice of Jesus. And when they came to the shore, they found something new. They were astonished. They were surprised. We find an impromptu seaside breakfast. Impromptu seaside breakfast. It is called a miracle within a miracle. When they cast the net on the right side, they caught multitude of fish. They could not drag the net onto the shore. And they saw bread and fish. And then Jesus asked them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. <coughs> Verse 10. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. So they had a very delicious breakfast. Very sumptuous breakfast. 
Jesus causes a great catch of fish. The disciples recognized Jesus only when they had multitude of fish in their net. When Jesus said, children, do you have any fish? They could not recognize his voice. Same thing happened to Mary. When Mary was standing near the sepulcher in the garden, Jesus asked her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you searching? Why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She thought Jesus was the gardener, the caretaker of the sepulchre. So they have taken away my master. Then Jesus called her by her name, Mary. Then only she recognized Jesus. She said, Rabboni. Here also we find a similar thing. Jesus asked children, do you have any fish? They could not recognize his voice. And then when Jesus said, cast your net on the right side, <clears throat> they obeyed. If they are not obeyed, they have not seen the great miracle. We learn a very great message in this act of obedience. When we obey God, much against all odds, you can see a great wonder. The fishermen were experts. In spite of that, they listened to the voice of Jesus without knowing it was Jesus. They obeyed and they followed the instruction and they saw a great miracle. We know who Jesus is. We worship Jesus. We adore him. He is our God. He is our Lord. When he speaks to us, it is our duty and privilege to obey him. When we obey, we can see a great wonder. We can see a great miracle. Now, after breakfast, we find a beautiful dialogue between Jesus and Peter. Jesus appeared exclusively for Thomas to strengthen his faith and to equip him to fulfill his mission. And now, Jesus wanted Peter to remember the promise that Jesus made before the other disciples. In Matthew chapter 16, we find this. Jesus asked the disciples this question, what do people think about me? They said, people think you are a prophet, you are Jeremiah, you are Elijah, you are John the Baptist. So Jesus was happy about it. And he said, what do you think about me? Then, as usual, Peter said, you are the Christ, son of the living God. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus was happy about his answer. Peter, it is not blood and flesh that revealed this to you. It is my father who is in heaven has revealed this to you. You are the rock, Petros. In Greek, Cephas in Hebrew. You are the rock. On you I will build my church. Peter has forgotten that. When Jesus called Peter, he said, you are a fisherman. I am going to make you, have, make you fishers of men. To the disciples he said. And he wants Peter to remember that. And Peter said, I will not deny you. We find here. So, 
In the first four, 14 verses, we find the impromptu B side, C side breakfast. And there we find charcoal fire. Second time we find charcoal fire. First time when Peter denied Jesus, John chapter 18, verse 18. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. On two different occasions, Peter had claimed extraordinary love for Christ. Let us turn to St. Matthew chapter 26, verses 32 following. St. Matthew chapter 26, verses 32 following. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. And in St. John chapter 13, verses 36 following. St. John chapter 13, verses 36 following. Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. So on these two different occasions, Peter claimed extraordinary love for Christ. So here Jesus asked him a penetrating question. Do you love more than this. In place of the threefold denial, Jesus asked for a threefold profession of love. And first he said, feed my lambs. Lambs need to be fed. Sheep need to be guided. Tend my sheep. Peter would need to care for diverse people in different ways. Peter must have been bewildered by Christ's words to him. Jesus said, you are a rock. On you I will build my church. Here we find that Peter is not a rock. He is a splintered rock. He has gone back to his old profession. He has forgotten the invitation that Jesus extended to him. Here Jesus has spoken of the future ministry of Peter and also of his death. When Peter was younger, he walks where he wished, moving about without restrictions. Now, let us examine our own lives. There is a bit of Peter in all of us. Peter crumbled under pressure when he was tempted to deny Jesus. In the same way, we also crumble under pressure when we are tempted. If Jesus were to ask me, do you love me? How would I respond? Many men and women down the ages have given their lives for Jesus. Here Jesus helps Peter to come out of his failures. Jesus reinstates Peter and says again here for the second time, follow me. In the beginning 
he said, follow me. And again, at the end, he says, follow me. He indeed followed Jesus this time. And he became a great preacher, a wonderful preacher, a great apostle. And he became the first bishop of Rome. In the Acts of the Apostles, we find how on the day of Pentecost, Peter challenged the people with the gospel of Christ. On that day, 300 souls were saved. 3,000 souls were saved. 3,000 souls were added. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Jesus reinstates Peter and says, follow me. Finally, Peter was caught and he was crucified under Emperor Nero. He said, do not crucify me like our Lord. You crucify me upside down. I am not worthy to be crucified like my Lord. Crucify me upside down. If Jesus can restore Peter, he can restore us too. Let us remember the calling. God has called us with a high calling. Let us not go back to our old life. Apostle Paul says when we are in Christ, we become new creatures. Old things will go away. Everything will become new. We are new creatures. We must do new things and great things for God's glory. God wants to use us. He strengthened the faith of Thomas. And he sent Thomas to India. And here, he restored Peter and sent Peter to Rome. And there, he died a martyr. He was crucified upside down. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this day, let us realize and analyze our own lives in the presence of God. God has called you and me. We have a great responsibility. And God wants us to fulfill that responsibility and that task. And he gives his strength and power. We are not alone. He comes again and again to strengthen us, to remind us so that we can carry on his mission in this world. May God bless all of us. Amen. Let us profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed as found on page number 46. Page number 46. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we'll have the announcements. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ once again. I very specially greet all the members who will be celebrating the birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. May God give them good health, strength and long life and help them celebrate many more birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Let us continue to pray for our country and for the whole world. Let us pray very specially for the elders of our church and the children. And let us also very specially pray for doctors, nurses and medical professionals who are working day and night to treat 
the coronavirus victims let us also remember the victims of coronavirus and their families let us continue to pray for the ministries of our church let us continue to pray for each and every family so that we can feel the presence of god in all that we day say and do take care of yourself stay at home stay safe and continue to pray so that we'll all come together once again to worship god the father god the son and god the holy spirit in spirit and in truth and we are looking forward to that glorious day may god bless all of us let us pray our loving heavenly father we especially pray for the members who will be celebrating the birthdays and wedding anniversary this week bless each and every one of them fulfill all your plans and purposes in and through their life fulfill all their wishes and desires continue to use them as a source of blessing to the church to the family and to the society we especially commit our country and the whole world in your hands o oh lord as we are caught in this deadly pestilence called coronavirus many have died all over the world many doctors have died many medical professionals have died and many people have died o oh lord we commit ourselves in your hands and the doctors and other nurses and health workers in your hands as they treat the coronavirus patients protect them under holy wings so that they can show your love to them and treat them so that the patients can recover we pray that you may remove this deadly pestilence from the face of the earth at the earliest so that we can all come together as one family of your kingdom to celebrate and to worship you for answering our prayers we commit all the leaders of our country and the world as they take lot of efforts in controlling and containing this deadly virus we pray that you may strengthen their hands and we also pray for the poor people very especially the migrant workers who do not have any food we pray that you may give the authorities so that they can come together to help them and meet the needs of the migrant workers give wisdom to the authorities so that they can plan well and distribute food packets and other materials that the migrant workers and the poor the downtrodden need and we also commit all the families of our church in your hands o lord bless them and protect them under your holy wings protect them from corona virus protect them from all deadly pestilences we submit our lives to you accept us o lord and use us for your glory through jesus christ our lord we pray amen let us all say the lord's prayer together our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our as if forgive those who sin against us do not bring us to the test but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen let us pray for the peace of the whole world o god who is the author of peace and concord in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life whose service is perfect freedom defend us your humble servants in all assaults of our enemies that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of jesus christ our lord amen the collect for grace o lord our heavenly father 
Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always that which is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us thank God for all that he has done. Let us say, along with the psalmist, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Now let us all sing together the hymn 242, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, hymn number 242. to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. God bless you.